Yo, baby, yo, it's your boy Proto with the haircut. <laughs> How we all doing this weekend? It is the Saturday Night Transformer Slag podcast live stream. What's up? I'm your boy Proto Man. We're here to, to talk the news, recap some stuff, do some, I guess we'll call it housekeeping of updates on the news in relation to Transformers this week. Talk about what we got in the mail and then do some super chat with the chat. And have some good fun tonight. How we all doing? Well, oh, a lot of people in today. Let's top out. So, let's jump into the news. And uh, then we'll get started, eh? So, first thing we're going to talk about, this was probably the big thing this week, was uh, the reveal of Waspinator. No surprise, uh, stolen Chinese, excuse me, in this case, stolen Vietnam factory uh, figure surfaced people were questioning if this was legitimate and then of course more images surfaced which led to that uh, when I did my initial segment talking about this I was kind of hot and cold on the mold because the initial photos that were taken were not really that great a photo combined with the fact that it was probably mistransformed and better photos had surfaced since and well needless to say Looks good. I, uh, I take back what I said um, in the previous segment. I actually think this thing looks really, really good. I'm still not a fan of his really oversized uh, wasp legs. Uh, but aside from that, everything else looks great. The thing is, the funny thing about Waspinator, and it's like a little bit of a fun fact about him, he has never, ever in his entire history of Beast Wars, in his wasp mode, in his beast mode, landed on a surface he always hits the ground he always gets shot to the ground but he's never landed on a surface as a wasp and used his legs to perch himself up so those wasp legs in the animation model were pretty much pointless and so when they did that generations one they pretty much focused more on a really good robot mode and the wasp legs weren't really a big issue but either way I mean, I still like what I see. The, the paint is really much more vibrant. I like what's going on here. And at the end of the day, I still feel that we're probably going to see this mold again in the future. Maybe a Netflix version, maybe a Takara version. And they're going to probably paint it up even more to make it even more accurate. And uh, you know what? I think it'll look great. I really do. I really do. Um, I, mean, I, I like what I see right now. It could only get better just with a little bit of paint here and there. But, uh, you know, it, it's pretty cool. And like I said before, I, I could see, I could totally see this being turned into Transketo or some other characters. And, of course, all the obvious repaints like Buzzsaw and everything like that. I, this is a mold I'm excited about. You know, I'm, I'm a Beast Wars guy. You know, this is a mold that speaks to me. Waspinator was one of my favorite characters from Beast Wars. I think everyone loved Waspinator. Everyone sympathized with him. You know, he's happy at last. So hopefully we'll get some more information on that in the future. Um, we got better photos now, but maybe uh, some in-packaging. How he's going to be available. Hopefully it won't be distributed badly. Maybe that rumored Wave 4, which I'm going to get into at the, end of, uh, at the end of this, because we have some new information that we got in terms of uh, how case assortments are going to work. What do we got here from some of the YouTube members here? Michael Koo says, Oversized insect legs. Hmm, maybe Beast Wars characters as long insect legs. <laughs> uh remold for the royalty maybe a black and white hornet well i was thinking honestly because i mean when i worked with bacon in the last year they did this like army builder set of all the waspinator repaints um maybe we'll see something of that i doubt it really you know like sky wasp and, and some of those other ones that they did king warder that was another one but who knows we'll see uh next up and this one most people might not care about but uh they announced the next jung jumbo funko pop and I will give them credit here. I will give them credit here. It's something different than what has been done with Funko Pop in the past in that this is a sound wave that has an opening chest so you could swap out the cassettes. So, oh my goodness, a Funko Pop that actually does more than just stand there. So, <laughs> so these are the Jumbos. They're uh, four times larger than your standard Funko Pop. They did an Optimus Prime already before that. I am shocked we haven't seen a Jumbo Devastator yet. Um, but that being said, I mean, hey, pretty cool at least that it does something more than just stand there. Uh, this is going to be a GameStop exclusive, and for us Canadians, 
Uh, it's going to be an EB Games exclusive, which is pretty much the Canadian version of GameStop. And uh, as of this recording, and I'm just going to pull it up here because this is painful to look at. As of this recording, uh, there is now 15 G1 retro-based Funko Pops that add to the original seven that were done from the Age of Extinction movie, coming to a grand total of 22 Transformers Funko Pops. Who is buying this stuff? I do not know for this to continue, but somebody is. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. The Jetfire, I think, is kind of cool because it has that Macross design. And if they do a Hot Rod or Rodimus, you know they're going to get a sale out of me. Just like how I bought the Proto Man Funko Pop. Uh, but yeah, like, the, the way I see it, someone's buying these either way. Yo, what up, Lee J? Lee J's in the house. Good friend of mine from in Montreal. What's up, Lee J? Um, so, uh, yeah, either way, I, someone's buying these Funko Pops either way. Doesn't make a difference. But yeah, hey, we got us the, the sound wave. It's the jumbo. I, I'm waiting for when they do a Devastator, and then it'll make sense. Yeah, it's definitely not Transformer fans buying them. Uh, let's get into some dinosaur-related stuff, and it's kind of the topic of the stream this evening. And it's, uh, what's up, Stinkfist? Uh, it's that of Dinobots in general. So we were revealed today the new overall title of what is going to be the Cyberverse line or the Transformers Bumblebee Cyberverse adventure Adventures. Man, Hasbro has really got to work on that. Um, and it's Dinobots Unite. And this is the control art. We get to see all the Dinobots are going to be making their Cyberverse debut. At this point, we only had Grimlock for those few, first few seasons. And, uh, you know, we got at least a little bit of a peek at what's going to be happening with that. But then... We were shown, just not too long ago, a Energon Armor, Transformers, Bumblebee, Cyberverse Adventures, Dinobots Unite. Man, that is a long name. Dinobot Sludge using Energon Armor. So people aren't familiar with the Energon Armor uh, gimmick. It started about two years ago. Uh, probably the best version of those Energon Armor stuff would have to be like the only way you could get like uh, Lugnut or Clobber, as she's called. Um, you know, it has this armor that flips over and stuff like that. So what's interesting is that we have Sludge here, very, you know, reminiscent of his Generation 1 namesake. And what's interesting is, you know, and I posted it here just from the art, because they don't really show it anywhere on the packaging, which is kind of silly. Um, it looks like his Energon armor has a dinosaur head, like an Energon dinosaur head. That's what it looks like. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, we don't have actual toy images of the Energon armor, except for that little top right thing showing how it kind of works and everything. But uh, pretty hype otherwise. I, I want to get all the Dinobots. Again, the thing with being a Cyberverse collector is that you kind of have this difficult goal of how do I get the best versions of every character when most of the line is gimmick-based, and that's always been a big issue. But this sludge actually looks pretty half-decent. Like, when you look at it, and then you look at, like, even, like, the Power of the Prime Sludge, I mean, it's pretty good. And that's pretty crazy when you think about it, because this this is going to be one of the gimmick-based ones that's going to have a pop-out Energon armor. So, um, looks pretty crazy. Looks pretty, pre pretty, pretty crazy. Hey, Proto Man, love, love what you do. Can't stick around. Wanted to say hi and throw a question over the wall. Leave the question, brother. I'll try to get to it, because <sighs> there's going to be a lot of questions later. I'm gonna, I was going to do Super Chat much later. Um, so yeah, that being that, and so, you know, again, like, here's all we got thus far. So of the Dinobots Unite line, this is all that we've had revealed thus far outside of the sludge that I just talked about. There's the control art on the right. So we have those two Energon armor, leader class, price point, gimmick to death, Bumblebee and Optimus Prime. They're auto transformers. They're the roll and convert or roll and transform kind of gimmick. And then on the bottom, we have the roll and combine stuff that's going on which we get a little bit of our look at swoop and sludge uh, excuse me and um slug or 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 slag depending on who you ask uh but yeah pretty cool otherwise i mean hopefully we'll get more stuff there, like we saw big lists of all kinds of stuff that's supposed to be coming out with this collection so i'm really curious to see what's happening with that because it's all going to be a strong indication of what the next two TV movies are going to be. Again, season four, we have the Netflix specials coming. There's all that kind of stuff that's happening. So hopefully we'll find out what's going on in the near future. Now let's talk about more Dinobot stuff. So we even had, we had Dinobots with 
Cyberverse, but we also have a dinosaur flavor with that of Rescue Bots. Now, Hasbro said that they weren't going to be doing a Rescue Bot series moving forward. They were just going to be doing toys to just kind of have something in that demographic and have the shelf space for the preschool line. Rescue Bots Academy had just recently finished. They're not going to be continuing with that show. So it looks like, and judging by everything that's shown here, everything except one figure here is a straight-up repaint from that dinosaur era of Rescue Bot stuff, the rescan era, if you will, back in 2014. And so a lot of them are just straight-up repaints. You could see in the middle I showed what the original paint schemes were from 2014. And in the case of even the Grimlock Dino Cycle that we have in that three-pack there, uh, that was a repaint from last year's Rescue Bot Academy 2009 Grimlock. Although this one is much more nicer. It's more G1 accurate with the colors, so I dig it a lot. It looks really nice, which is going to tempt me to want to get a Dino Cycle. Looks really good. Looks really good. The one thing I want to point out here is now we have a Predaking... And it's an Autobot Predaking. Now, this is obviously due to the fact that they haven't done a Predaking in a while. They have to use the trademark somewhere. And they're just throwing it at a rescue bot. Kind of sucks, but that's just the way it is. Uh, for people that are wondering about this Predaking Autobot mold, primarily because it's an Autobot, because it's actually a repaint of, I actually own that one, of uh, Heatwave. And so it has a big Autobot logo. So the light's kind of bright on it. But there's an Autobot logo right there on the chest there. And then because it's a rescue bot, you just literally, like, just pull it up like this. And now I'm, and I'm having difficulty doing it because it's a rescue bot and I'm on camera. But, eh. And then big Autobot logo, which, again, you, you could barely see because the lighting is so bright. And my camera can't focus on something that bright. That's why it can't focus on me, I guess. Um, but, yeah... <laughs> Point is, they, they, they painted it black and orange, called it Predaking. It's an Autobot, and that's it. Kind of a shallow repaint, but shallow repaints are the name of the game. Uh, the new mold is that uh, that Dinobot Snarl mold over there on the bottom right of the three-pack. So uh, at least there's one new mold that's coming out of it, but otherwise everything is dinosaurs. It's part of their Dinobot Adventures subline. It will be hitting stores at the end of this year. And it's just to play up the whole dinosaur thing because November is when we're going to be getting the uh, the Dinobots Unite kind of Cyberverse stuff. There's a lot going on, but at the end of the day, hey, if you're into Rescue Bot stuff or you like Rescue Bots Academy, this is kind of the spiritual successor of what's next for the line. And check that out if you enjoy it. Some people like Rescue Bots. Let's talk about Kingdom. So... We were given today the release date for Kingdom. We finally know when it is starting, which is going to be July 29th, 2020. So that's pretty hype. We finally know what's going to be happening with Kingdom and when we could uh, get ready to wake up early to watch the Kingdom and Netflix series. But also they gave us the release date for the Kingdom soundtrack. Now, I blocked out the names of all the tracks here because they are all tons of spoilers. So I'm going to warn people ahead just now, if you do try to look at the soundtrack listing for the Kingdom album or uh, go online on Amazon, you are going to be spoiled if you read that. So it's uh, pretty crazy. But uh, otherwise, uh... oh, we got a super chat from Michael Koo. Proto Man, must dash for a late dinner. Keep it thick. <laughs> Thank you, Michael, for the gold super chat. Thank you, brother, for $20. Thanks a lot, my friend. Take care. You're always super supportive of the podcast and everything we do here. Uh, but getting back to what I was saying, you know, so if you don't want to get spoiled, I read them, unfortunately, for the news and everything. And uh, yeah, so try to avoid it. Uh, but the other news in relation, if you are interested in this album, it will be available digitally July 26, 2021 on both Amazon and Apple Music, a.k.a. iTunes. So it is out there. There's going to be a bunch of sound. Apparently... Apparently, the guy who did the soundtrack, because I looked into this, uh, he was the guy who used to do the music for the background. If anyone remember the 90s show, Are You Afraid of the Dark? It was done. It was a Canadian-made show by Sinar, and that's why I know it. But, I mean, it was played all over the world. And so, apparently, he did the music for that. Now, I don't know what that's supposed to mean, because does anyone remember the music from Are You Afraid of the Dark except the intro, I guess? But... Yeah, it is. He apparently he worked on that, so 
We'll find out what happens in the future with that. Again, Kingdom, July 29th on Netflix. Be, for, be sure to check it out. Of course we will. Of course we will. We need our fiction. We need to know what's going on. So there's that. Now, the last thing I want to talk about with Kingdom and its relation to... So what's happening is Wave 3 is supposed to be hitting. But apparently, people have been reporting from Walmarts that we're seeing entire cases of Wingfinger on his own, the deluxe fossilizer, the combiner fossilizer, if you will. And people are speculating that this is going to be wave three and we're actually going to be getting a wave four, which is going to be the one that's going to have Scorponok and the wheel jack insert and everything like that. So that being said, um, if you go to your Walmarts and you see a ton of wing fingers, it's not because of scalping or, or him not being a, a good selling toy. It's just he's shipping eight per case right now. I don't know why Hasbro made this decision to ship eight per case. Maybe they're really happy with Wingfinger. Maybe because he's part of a combiner and he has the head of the combiner. So they want to encourage people to buy multiple of Wingfinger. Um, is she a fem Is Wingfinger a female? I don't know. I, di I didn't hear anything about that, so... Let's assume, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to go with it then. I don't know. Uh, either way, so it is what it is, like I say. Uh, but just keep that in mind when you're going to see a wall of wing fingers. Because if it's eight per case and people are not excited about those characters, that is going to be kind of a difficult thing to deal with because it will clog the shelves and make it difficult for let's say a wave four for some toy managers to want to order so that's that's something guys keep in mind keep in mind that's going to make things very difficult because like i always say end of wave lines always are difficult to get they always are so this is going to probably make it even more difficult but we'll see what happens we'll see what happens last thing i want to talk about and it was a really interesting interview that uh, I recently read uh, Wei Jing uh, Magazine, which is a Chinese website, interviewed the legendary Transformers masterpiece and Transformers masterpiece engineer and designer himself, Shogo Hisui. Now, Shogo Hisui, for people who aren't familiar with, was the guy who did MP10. He did Sideswipe. He did Wheeljack. He did some of the best masterpieces ever made. And... Shogo recently sat down and did an interview with, with Weijin Magazine, a Chinese website. The article had been recently translated into English. What I'll do is when I post this live segment uh, in the replays, I will link in the comments uh, the translated interview. It is, it is something that if you really want to understand how they decide uh, price point for Transformers and paint application and which characters are used and if there should be gimmicks, a uh, very interesting interview because Shogo is a large part of the design process. Uh, he mentions how they go back and forth with Hasbro and how stuff is decided in the past. Just a very, very, very interesting interview. It's apparently only part one of two, so I'm looking forward to the second part of this when it does surface. But definitely, I'm going to link that. Like, obviously, everyone who's listening today live, uh, the link is not available. But when we do the, the upload and the replay of these segments, which usually happen around 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night tonight, uh, I will try to link it in the comments below. It'll be the pinned comment uh, afterwards. So check that out. Really, inter really interesting interview. I, stuff that... Stuff that really is a lot of the flesh and blood of our podcast, where we talk about a lot of the design and how, like I say, how the sausage is made, or inside baseball, or what's happening, you know. So, very interesting stuff. Really curious uh, to see what that part two is, but just wanted to bring that up, too. And that is it, more or less, my friends, for the news. That is it for the news. Uh, got some cool stuff in the mail. I'm gonna I'm gonna cover that in a sec. I just want to just shout out our sponsor, Symbiote Studios, who again hooked us up with. I love these shirts and the pins and the plush. Although Grimlock's back there, so Symbiote Studios they do our uh, the official Hasbro Transformer plush pins and T-shirts. They are awesome. They have their new Grimlock out, which with all the recent Dinobot craziness that's going on. Be sure to check out that Grimlock is easily the, been their best seller. People have been loving it. And that thing is huge. That thing is very big too. So for $24.99, you get a big dino. You get a very big dino. And of course, they have a, a certain Sentai coming in the near future. So uh, be sure to check out that. Another big dino. Let's put it this way. 
So uh, be sure to check that out. And again, they have their new ad in the Transformer comic book. So check out Transformers issue number 29 of the War World miniseries happening right now of the ongoing from IDW. And you can even see the ad for Symbiote Studios there too. Thank you, Symbiote Studios, for sponsoring as well as Hasbro. So let's get into the news. Uh, not the news, The uh, what we got this week. Uh, um, I got a really cool package in the mail from my buddy in Korea. I have a friend in Korea, and he's he's like 50% to Transformers. He's, he's not like a hardcore Transformer fan. He knows what Transformers are. He can name a lot of the characters. But he's more of a, of a Lego guy, and he likes other stuff. He likes, he likes die-cast cars. And what he does is... He goes to these Korean stores, and they're called, and I'm going to totally butcher it, so any South Koreans are going to be, like, facepalming, Tsunkun, Tsunkun, which is, it means junk stores, pretty much. That's what it translates to, Tsunkun stores. And what they are, essentially, is to kind of give you guys an idea. In Korea, you'll have collector secondary market stores, where, like, someone will, like, have, like, a G1 Transformer and it'll be sold in a store that they know the value of it as a collectible, and it'll be sold at a at an understandable price. Then you have like flea markety garage sale kind of stores, you know, where they get stuff, and you know they 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 sell it at a price that makes sense, but they don't really know what it is. And then you have the sunken stores, the junk stores, which these are stores that get tons of inventory of used toys, used product, used kind of stuff in that Pacific Rim region, uh, not the movie, the, the actual Pacific Rim, and they get it for free, and then they just try to get rid of it as easily as possible. Their logic is like, easy come, easy go. So it's just like, if they get it for free, if they charge a dollar, it's still profit for them. And these stores have crazy turnovers. And my friend constantly goes there looking for stuff for himself, but he also, when he gets like great deals of stuff, he just picks up a bunch of junk for me. And then when there's a nice box of it, uh, I talked about him on the past when he sent me the little Keshi Gumus. And so he got a lot of cool stuff. And some of this stuff is probably going to be. So the first one, the first thing, actually, I probably should move my water. Uh, the first stuff that he gave, the stuff that I, I really did, he, he always throws in anything because usually he'll get like a bag of toys. And he'll get that bag of toys just for like that one transformer in it. And that whole bag will be like a dollar, like literally a dollar Canadian uh, when you translate it from uh, from uh, South Korean currency. And like they'll like so like in the bag, there was a whole bunch of like Yoke watch medals, which I mean, they're, they're probably worth something to somebody. But so that were in the bag. But I just want to just bring that up because I was just in there. But this was what was in there. And I was very happy when I saw this. This is the Japanese version of Transmetal Megatron. This one doesn't suffer from GPS. You could actually transform this and not have to worry about anything breaking on it. So this is really hype. People are always looking for this version because if you own the American version, it will break, where this one does not. Uh, and the only difference is, is that it, it's, it's a slightly browner plastic and it says like Destron on there so this is pretty hype i already have one so i'm going to be bringing this whenever the world goes back to normal i will be bringing this to one of the tfcon parts parties and i'll sell it really cheap i will sell it cheap um but i'm gonna like this is really hype that he found this 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 no joke when you consider that the bag was probably like a dollar this probably cost like 50 cents whatever but that was one really hype find probably the best find of of the day for him but here's some of the other stuff too which really it really gives you a perspective of like what is considered junk even in korea so um megatronus from uh robots in disguise 2015 that was also in the bag uh this is one of the auto change ones i don't know it looks okay i guess i'm i think i'm gonna keep it because i never got that one and this i think this was probably like 49.99 imagine imagine obviously it's missing some stuff too but whatever Whatever, you can't complain. Uh, first wave Cyberverse stuff showing up in South Korea already in the junk. This is one of those auto change ones where you twist it. Like, and you twist it and you turn it and then it turns into a robot mode Bumblebee. 
you could appreciate that, I guess. You know, uh, eh. has the hot rod spoiler. Kind of cool. I'm gonna probably keep that one too. Never got that one. That was probably like originally, probably originally like MSRP, like six ninety nine or something. And then, and then we have this one, which made me very happy too. The Cyberverse Repugnus, which has the cool little gimmick there with the back where he could do his little bitey action. Um, and this one, just because Repugnus was so cool in the show, you know, and I didn't get his his actual... I don't even think... I'll be honest with you, I don't even think I ever saw this one in the wild because Cyberverse had a really w weird distribution with our Toys R Us. So that was in there too, pretty freaking hype. And then in terms of uh, of not non-Transformer non stuff, like he knows I love video game stuff and Dragon Ball, so he got this cool like... Dragon Ball keychain, and then it has like this little Nintendo. Oh, this is a Famicom, mind you. Famicom video game attached to it. So you got Raditz and Goku. This I think was probably like no joke, five cents. Um, another bag of Keshi Gumus. What is in there this time around? Hey, it's Kami from Dragon Ball without his cane. It's uh, <laughs> it's um, anyone remember Samurai Pizza Cats? What else is in here? Oh, it's it's Krillin. But he's happy for some reason because he's not getting beat up for once. Uh, I guess this is supposed to be... This is probably uh, Bulma. Yeah, it's probably Bulma. One of her many designs. What else is here? We got some Ultimate Muscle stuff. Kaneku Man. Look at that one. That's pretty cool, actually. There's a whole bunch. He always gets like a bag of these because there's always like cool stuff in there. He usually he gets them because the decoys of Transformers were also done like this. And so once in a while you see those in there. A uh, little Ultraman one too. This was probably five cents. Again, Ultraman's always cool. And then a nice little mini poster which came with the Keshi Gumus of the, of the uh, Kiniku Man stuff. So pretty cool. That, this is also pretty awesome. And then he threw in also, because it was in the bag, some Mario stickers. Yay! So, pretty cool stuff again. Thanks to my buddy. I don't know if he wants me to say his name uh, in South Korea, but pretty cool stuff that uh, he sent me. Pretty cool. Again, the Transformer stuff. Like, again, that, that Megatron. That Megatron. That, that, when I saw that, I was like, damn. That's, that's pretty cool, bro. So, that'll be coming to a Proto Man parts party to a TFCon near you. At some point, I don't know, probably not Baltimore, but maybe, maybe Toronto. We shall see. We shall see. The world is still in a crazy place. And that's it for all I got this week. Proto Man doesn't really get retail product anymore. He just gets like little tchotchkes in the mail and stuff and junk. But uh, you know what? It's not, it's not about what you spend. It's about if you, if you enjoy it. You know, that's all that really matters at, in the end of the day. So... <laughs> It was Ultraman doing a Hadouken, actually, because that's that's Ultraman Great from Ultraman Towards the Future, and that's actually his finishing move, is he does like a Hadouken, and they did a Super Nintendo game, which was a fighting game. I think Bandai of America did it, and yeah, it has like a, he has like a Hadouken attack kind of thing. Oh, oh, Primal, you want it from me? Okay, man, I'll, maybe I'll put it aside for you then. Okay, that's pretty cool, because you, you I know I'll see at some point. Okay, cool. I haven't decided what I want to sell for, but don't worry, I won't ask much. I won't ask much. It's just, uh, you know, it's just, it's really cool that, uh, that he sent it. All I have to do is just pay for shipping. Like, he finds all the stuff, and then he just asks me to pay for shipping. So, just pay for my shipping. <laughs> you know, he finds all kinds of wacky stuff. Like, usually a lot of the stuff, like, in the bag, it's, it's you know, it's like, oh, hey, it's Kaneku Man stuff, it's Dragon Ball. Like, I, I always tell him... Any Dragon Ball stuff, any Kaneku Man stuff, anything like of those Keshis, any Transformer stuff, obviously, but he hasn't been had a lot of luck with them. He says usually when he sees them, it's like one and it's beat up, but he'll still get it, so it's pretty hype. But yeah, man, like that's the best Transmetal Megatron you could ever own because it won't break on you. That's the best part. And it's complete. It has everything. Look at that. Like, think about it. Like, it has the tail, it has this, and then like, you know... Well, I actually have to take this off. Like, it doesn't break because it uses that different plastic that's not brown. You know? So it's it's something where you don't have to be terrified to transform this thing. Which is absolutely fantastic. Anyways. Too many primals. How many primals do we have? We have a lot of primals today? Come on, guy. Well, then again, I don't know. I, I named myself after a Mega Man character, so I guess I'm guilty too. 
Mm. Gotta love me my water. <sighs> Go through two bottles a stream every time. Alrighty, so uh, we still got some time. Let's do uh, some super chats, and then we will chillax for the rest of the night. Oh, I, I actually got one more thing in the mail, but I'm actually going to save it for... Uh, I'm gonna save it for like I want to do like a an Instagram post and stuff with it too with some some images because it's an animation cell, so I just want to do that. Whoa! Oh, the super chats are already rolling in. Okay, so let's do some super chats, and we will enjoy the rest of the evening with all my beautiful people tonight. So let's start with Vicar and Flips. <laughs> I love these names, Vicar and Flips. Do you think Studio Series is nearly finished? It seems like they've given us most of the movie characters. Once they do the Fallen, that'll be it. First of all, number one, once they do The Fallen, that'll not be it because there's still tons of Michael Bay era stuff and characters left. Think about, we really haven't had the Ice Cream Twins. Like, where are those? And I would love to get the Ice Cream Twins done properly because we only had, like, that one version. Like, that one, like, it's like it was a deluxe, but it was like it was two legends put together. Um, I firmly believe that the reason why we got 86 movie studio series was because... They probably felt what you felt was they're running out of characters. So if you do Studio Series 86, you put out all these releases that buy you time until the next live action movie. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. They're filming in Montreal right now and I got to see some stuff. I'm just saying, some really cool stuff is going on. In downtown Montreal near the Vic Hospital. So uh, it's going to be interesting to say the least. Um... But no, there, there's, there's still going to be Studio Series. I think Studio Series is going to be along for, is around for a while. I really do. It sells very well. It sells even better in China. China in China, Studio Series is a big deal, and that's a big market for them. It's going to be around for a while. I, I, I honestly believe that for sure, 100%. It's going to be around for a while. So, uh, But I hope that answers your question. And again, like I, I'm waiting for The Fallen too. You know, where's our good Fallen figure? Like, we really have never gotten a good Fallen figure. That first Voyager with the green wasn't that great. And then they did one that was a better mold, but then they didn't color it properly. Like, what was that? Like, that purple and ice colored one that had the removable face? I want my good Fallen figure. But I also want the Ice Cream Twins, even though people don't like those characters. But yeah, I hope that answers your question, Vicar. Thank you for the super chat question. Let's go a little more down. We got Downright Superb, who always supports the podcast. Thank you, Downright, for the super chat questions. And we got one here. Are the Beast Wars characters from Cal Kingdom selling well? Will Hasbro, Hasbro fully lean into Beast Wars, or will they have to wait for the movie? Should uh, G1 should only be in the SS86 line. Well, I firmly believe that um, with anything they do, they're always going to have a little bit of G1 flavor. So even if you have something that's like an Armada line, right, they'll still have a little bit of G1 happening somewhere. And I mean, that's why, like, even when pe people were freaking out about Kingdom being a Beast Wars line, and in the end, it ended up having more G1 than Beast Wars in it anyways, uh, I mean, look what was happening with Studio Series. They went full on 86, and there's your G1 fix right there, and th that's some damn good G1 if you ask me. You know, it's it's the quality of the Studio Series stuff is above and beyond of that of the kingdom stuff in terms of like budget so if anything you would want the g1 stuff to be done in studio series so uh i i, I fully believe number one that there'll always be g1 something to answer the first part of your question i think kingdom is selling well specifically the beast stuff from my experience going to multiple toys r us's and walmart's i don't have targets here but going to those two I noticed that if there's one thing that shelf warms, it's the fossilizers. That's the only thing. And more specifically, core class stuff, like core class fossilizers. That's the stuff that shelf warms. We recently just got like the core class Starscream and stuff and everything. Those just started to show up. So obviously I've seen those in person and those like are in plentiful numbers. But I'll see how like two weeks from now, will there still be those Starscreams or will those be gone and it'll still be like, you know, fossilizers and the core class fossilizers and stuff like that. I think, and, and I guess to a mild extent, but even then I, I can't say that he was uh, shelf warming because at the end of the day, he even, even he sold out like Rat Trap. I found that the smaller price point stuff wasn't moving as quickly. The larger stuff, all the deluxes, that was going very fast. Um, but I think it's doing well. I think it's doing well. I really do. And the Beast characters. I mean, if, if they're willing to do a 
Beast Wars reissue line and really jack up the price on those reissues, they clearly see that there's some kind of money going somewhere and the marketing is there. And I mean, I'll be honest with you, when they did that 10th anniversary Beast Wars line, you can barely see it, but when they did that 10th anniversary Beast Wars line, that sold very well. That sold very well back then. That was back in the day when KB Toys still existed. You know, usually KB Toys, when they get stuck with stock, they right away slash the prices and try to get rid of it. That stuff sold and it was gone. You know, like it, it always did well. And maybe because it came with a DVD and it had that build a figure gimmick with transmutate. So you were encouraged to buy all the figures. So there really wasn't like a, a figure that sucked because people needed to get them all. But either way, I mean, I think they were great. I really do. Um, but I think so. I think it'll be just cool. It'll be fine. And I think Beast Wars is doing fine. So, uh, again, <laughs> that's all, that's all I could really say. Uh, but thanks for the super chat downright. Good question. Good question. Um, Tom Laney says, I want a movie onslaught. Yeah, it was the, exactly like the, the, uh, you know, last night movie onslaught. There's so many characters that still don't have studio series figures. What was the name? The Mohawk character? I think his name was Mohawk. Probably was. Um, you know, like there's so many characters that still haven't gotten proper figures. So sooner or later, they will get to all of those. Look at all those background characters from the Bumblebee movie. Where's my Bumblebee movie RC? Where's my Bumblebee movie Braun? Where's my Bumblebee movie? Like supposedly they're coming, but there's they have tons. They have tons left. It's it's gonna be, it's gonna be just fine. They're gonna be they're gonna be making Studio Series stuff for a very long time. And the second you get a new movie, the second you get a new movie, that just injects a whole new bunch of new figures to be put into that. So I wouldn't worry about that at all. We got another super chat question from the Grumpy Goat. The Grumpy Goat wants to know, if you were a Cybertronian, what would your alt mode be? I actually think I answered uh, my, my fan character. You would be a VTOL aircraft carrier. You would be that? You think that would be cool, VTOL? That's the one, with, that's, the one that's kind of like, uh, it has the two helicopter blades, right? I'm not, a, I'm not an aviationist, so I don't know. But that's, the, that's like, so I guess you'd be kind of like, Who's a VTOL? I guess kind of like some versions of, uh, I think Skyhammer was a VTOL, the G1 uh, Pretender. But I think also, uh, I think also some other characters I'm trying to remember. Maybe Obsidian? No, that's like a double helicopter. I don't know. <laughs> You'll have to correct me. Uh, who would I be? Formula One car. Um, I'd be a red Formula One car. It's, it's my fan character, Proto. You know? And uh, for anyone knows my... Uh, fan character from Beast Wars, which I don't want to get into because then people could look up the past of that and how cringy it was to see 14-year-old Proto Man doing stuff. Um, but I had a fan character from Beast Wars too. Um, but I'd uh, Red Formula One. He'd be super fast and he'd be totally like goading Blur to do races and stuff. I would love that. That would be my Cybertronian. A Cybertronian-esque kind of Formula One car. Low, spoiler, front spoiler, open wheel, that whole ordeal. Be really cool. Uh, Stinkfist69 says, so will that mean 20 years from now that fossilizers will be harder to get and easy, and, or easier to get? It depends. Uh, to give an example, what sold, what sold badly in, in G1? We had pretender shells, headmasters, all that later G1 stuff. When G1 had a resurgence of popularity because of eBay and late 90s, early 2000s, everyone was going for that 84, 85, 86 product and was ignoring all of those pretender shells and everything. So someone like me, I got all that G1, 84, 85, 86 stuff very early. So I was able to get a lot of that stuff pretty easily because no one cared about Landmind or... You know, people, okay, maybe they care about Bludgeon, but they didn't care about Landmine or Doubleheader or Octopunch or so many of those characters or the Headmasters like Hosehead and Sirens, maybe Nightbeat. Um, but now people are going like, okay, I want to complete my G1 collection. And those later pretenders are difficult to get because there's not many left. And the people who did buy them bought them. And the ones that are left that are complete are tough. So it's the same thing. Now let's go to the next era, Beast Wars. What is the toughest and most expensive Beast Wars stuff of the Western releases? All that late wave stuff that didn't sell well. Fox Kids repaints, Beast Wars Mutants. Those ones, man, the mutants, some of them go for like 40, 50, 60 bucks, loose complete. 
like the sound wave and, and poison bite and razor claw. So, you know, I think that if they sell badly and no one buys them and there's not a strong secondary market, then 200% fast forward 20 years, of course, they're going to be tough for sure. Because I see that with stuff that already look, the, the beast wars mutants are 23 years old. Yeah. It would, yeah. It would be about 23 years old, 20, uh, 22 years old. And I already see that late wave beast machine stuff, air Raptor, uh, the Dinobots, you know, mega head, Megatron, Savage Noble, uh, battle unicorn, all very difficult to get T-Rex, T-Rex even difficult to get. Not a strong secondary market because they were on their way out. People were buying car robot stuff online while they were shunning beast machines. You know, different er different time. People were not feeling that. So I would definitely uh, say yes if it doesn't sell well. Uh, why is modern fiction so bad? Even tried the comics. Uh, well, you know, downright superb. What's what's going on right now is. We live in an era where Netflix is really influencing how a lot of companies want to distribute their product. And when they know that a product is going to be binged, whether it be children or that of, uh, of adult viewers, there's a rush to put out the product. Uh, Netflix, unfortunately, when they have product that's made by, you know, Netflix funded companies, they're non unionized voice actors, which is why I warn people about Kingdom. You're not going to see your favorite voice actors doing Rat Trap and Optimus Primal and Megatron. Let's put it that way. So the voice acting is always, you know, no, I don't want to insult them, but not on the level that we have an expectation of. There's a lot of good Netflix exclusive stuff, but there's also a lot of crap a lot you know for every like one amazing show there's like nine shows that like would be a waste of your life so it's it gets pretty crazy hey even tfg1 mike's here man everyone's here today aaron archer everyone's just kind of jumping in today everyone's bored Are you guys bored today you bored mike <laughs> um but yeah like uh, the way that i see it it's just it's something that Netflix is really influencing how storytelling is done and they're trying to make it sometimes very simplistic or they're trying to make it that, you know, you have six episodes, but it's really one episode the way it's written because they want people to binge it, but they don't want to call it like one three hour episode. So they call it like a six episode miniseries. You know, it's it sucks right now for a lot of different reasons. It really does. Um, I forget who said it. Some Someone posted on my Twitter, I think it was James Roberts, someone posted something where he was saying like how some of the writing is so bad today from big professional movies that it should tell amateur writers that, hey man, you got a chance now. Because if this stuff is, is happening like professionally and they're getting paid, then you could do it, <laughs> you know? So if anything, it being crap right now is an opportunity for amateur writers to get their foot in the door. Because if you could do better, make it happen, Captain. Show it to me. You know? But thank you for the super chat question. Cameron Strife with the super chat wants to know, not fair, I don't live in Canada. I, I want to buy that Dino me Megs so bad. Come on, man. <laughs> well, th the problem is, is I do all three TF cons. But the problem is, is that because only one of those TF cons is in Toronto... It's the only one that I could bring the hundreds of figures to. Like, I, no joke, Larry's in the chat here. He travels with me. We load up the car. Load it up to the tits with just everything. Hundreds of figures. And then we drive to Toronto and do a parts party in the room. And anyone who's seen posts on my Twitter of all the photos from the past parts parties, they're crazy. Cheap prices, awesome stuff. But... If I wanted to do that with the American shows, there's two problems. Number one, the most obvious problem is border. So if I cross the border and I have all these figures with me, and they go, so what are you doing? What, what are you, why are you crossing the border today to go to, to the United States? Uh, just for a convention. Well, what's all those boxes? Um, gifts. 
No, they're not going to believe it. They're going to know that I'm going there to make money, which is illegal. You know, you have to have a work visa and all kinds of stuff. So you have to get that all. So that's the first problem. That's the first problem. And the second problem is most of the TF cons, I fly to them. So, you know, you can't really bring st that much. Oh, I'm going to fill my entire suitcase with stuff to sell. It's, it's, it's difficult. So it, ha it has to be TF con Toronto, unfortunately. I know you don't live in Canada, but come to TF con Toronto. Tons of Americans, tons of people in the shadow are Americans have come to TF Con Toronto. Your dollar goes a lot further in Canada. So when you're buying food, it's cheap. When you're getting your hotel, it's cheap. When you're getting your flight, it's cheap. I always, you know what I used to do back in the day when I used to work at Burger King? I used to save one month's pay and I would put that one month's pay towards going to BotCon back in the day. And it's kind of the same thing. If you could afford to put one month's pay aside, like if you like are in a situation where, you know, you're not living paycheck to paycheck, if you still live with your parents, if you could get put aside like a solid, in your case, because you're American, like I, I was going to say 1,500, but I'll say like 1,000. If you could put a, a 1,000 aside, you could have like a crazy TFCon weekend. That's your flight. That's your hotel. That's your food. That's your entry to the convention. That's money for the dealer room. You'll be, you'll be set. And you get to meet the guests. You get to see this ugly face, you know, everything's perfect. Everything's perfect, man. It'll all work out. But that's what I would suggest. You know, when it comes to any conventions, if it, the, nothing is impossible. If, if this dumbass could work at Burger King, you know, this was like almost 20 years ago. If this guy could work at Burger King and still fly to, you know, BotCon, Texas <laughs> back in 2005, then anyone can. You just got to manage your money smart. You know, that's why I do transformer finance videos because I like to talk about like what's doing well, what isn't doing well, where you could spend your money, where you don't, where you don't have to rush. I always tell people, look, when wave one of a toy line comes out, you don't have to rush to buy it. There's going to be plenty of it. You know, there's going to be so much of it. Like ultra primal said here, TF con Toronto has been moved to December. Yeah. You know, imagine TF con Toronto would have been July which would have been, you know, now almost one month away. Now it's going to be December. So much, you have half a year to plan, you know? You got half a year to plan, assuming it doesn't get canceled. I pray it doesn't get canceled. I hope it doesn't get canceled. I mean, come on, man. We've missed three TF cons at this point. This is brutal, but... Um... <laughs> Hey, Proto Man, did you get my Canadian Lucky Charms? I, didn't, I, don't, I don't buy uh, Canadian sugary cereals because they taste terrible. I remember I was at Costco in Canada and I saw that they were selling Cookie Crisp and I got so excited and I bought it and then I brought it home, I poured it and it tasted terrible and then I turned over the box and it was manufactured by General Mills in Canada. And I was like, oh, they made a Canadian Cookie Crisp. It tasted terrible. Yuck. You can't beat an American made cereal, sugar cereal. You can't. Hope in Baltimore relents the masks. Well, w again, ultra, uh, ultra primal. So many primals. Rodimus primal, brother. I, I don't know what's like. I can't tell what's happening day to day. You know, like if people ask me like, so what do you think is going to be happening next week? I have no clue. You know, like you're talking to the guy that if you if you literally watched the streams last year and I was just going like, imagine like it was like last year, July, me doing these streams. And I was just going like, man, sure can't wait till the world gets back to normal at the end of the year. And we're a year later now. And like I say, it is what it is, you know, so I, I have positive hope, but I also am trying to be realistic here, you know. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Oh, Fair Lady Z's here too. Jeez, everyone is here today. What? TF Talk. See, T Fair Lady Z, she's an American. She's an awesome American. And she says here, TFCon Toronto is awesome. I'm not sure what travel is like though this year. Well, I can't even imagine, Anastasia. I can't even imagine. I'll see you at Baltimore this year. Assu yeah, I look, I hope Baltimore happens. I'll be honest with you. Of the three that are planned right now, because we have Baltimore, Baltimore is October, then we got um, TFCon Toronto in December, and then we got the LA show next year. That one's far away, so I'm not even going to talk about that one, because that could be anything. Baltimore, I want to go. You know me, I don't miss shows, but it has to happen. 
So it's something where it's like, let's see what happens. You know, like it, if Baltimore is in a good state of affairs, look, most of TFCon staff is Canadians. If we can't cross the border, game over. You know, if we have to cross the border and quarantine for two weeks, game over. Do you know how many hotel, you know, nights you got to spend, you know, just to be like it, for all that stuff. So again, the world's got to be in the right place for all that to happen. For, for, for everything to happen. That's the problem. That's the big issue. So I'm hoping for the best. I really am. Because missing not only three TF cons, but all the conventions I was used to going to every year, all the crazy shows, all the gatherings, all the fun, you know, I miss going to like, you know, game nights and everything like that. And my arcades that I go to, I go to barcades and stuff, you know, I miss going to barcades. I miss all of that stuff. You know, it's so... I'm just hoping for the best, my friends. You know, that's just it. And I can't say shows are happening. I can't say they can't. I just hope they do happen. Downright Superb with the question wants to know, where the hell did you get that Matrix necklace? I talked about this uh, last week, didn't I? So interesting story with these. I'll bring the other one for people who didn't... Uh, for people who didn't pay attention last week or weren't here so uh, this necklace was made by a website called stylinonline.com today they are one of the number one t-shirt distributors for pop culture in the world but back in the day in 2001 they were a small kind of pop culture website they made a whole bunch of matrix necklaces what's cool about this matrix necklace is it comes off and you could actually plug it in your G1 Optimus Prime, your original G1 Optimus Prime toy. Um, it was kind of like third party before they were third party. And that was the gimmick where you could wear it and then you could flip it over and it actually plugs in the little it dividend of a G1 Optimus Prime toy, 1984, 1985. And that was it. And then they did like a Decepticon version too. I have that upstairs, uh, which was purple. Some of them, they still kick around on eBay. You'd have to find them. Now, Hasbro loved these so much that they actually got the mold from Stylin and released it officially. Now, this mold originally was used with the New Year's Convoy, which was a Japanese Takara release. But then we got it officially, officially in the Rodimus Cyclonus Battle in Space 2-pack. So you actually can get what I got. See, this one's plastic in metal. But this came out much later. This was like, what, 2009? No, much later than that. 2010, maybe 11. Came out much later. So that's where I got it from. I love my Matrix necklace. In fact, like a lot of times when Josh Perez, when he draws art of me, he always draws a little Matrix necklace. It's pretty cool. But I mean, sometimes they're still kicking around. But if you, if you can't find it, again, if you pick up that Rodimus Cyclonus Battle in Space 2-pack, if you notice, it has the two little, has the two little holes there. So you could still put a, a chain around. You go to go to like Walmart, get like a, a necklace chain. This came with it. The chain actually came with it, but you could get a nice chain with it. Then you got a nice little metal necklace. I think Anastasia has one, actually. I remember I took a photo with her. She also had them, if I remember correctly. Did she? Does she have? Did she even comment about? It? Anyways, <laughs> but uh, either way, hope that hope that answers that question. Tom Laney, one of my YouTube members, wants to know, just think of all the money you saved over the past year when you do finally go out look out. Bro, I will agree with that. I was having that discussion with, uh, who was it that I was talking to? Oh, I was talking to Toy Robots, uh, the magazine guys, because I did an interview with them uh, off, off the air after I did the interview with them. Um, that's going to be in their magazine. There's like a Toy Fair robot magazine kind of thing that's out there toy robot check them out uh, i did an interview for them and there's this gonna be this huge interview with me in it and one thing that i talked about off the air with them we were talking about how you know if you missed a bacon right like back in the day like if you didn't do bacon what did you save by not doing bacon what was the flight what was the hotel what was the box set right and i said like well if you didn't do the bacon all the money that you saved technically could go towards buying all the exclusives off of eBay, even if they're marked up. So it's kind of the same thing here where it's like, if I didn't do three TF cons, yeah, did I save money? I guess, 
but I think it's also in my case, like my goals when I go to TFCon are not from a monetary standpoint. It's more from like a business. It's networking. You know what I mean? It's networking more than anything else. And I find that going to TF cons are more about meeting people, networking, uh, meeting guests that might be a once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, like I'm so grateful that I did that BotCon that had Buster, Buster Jones, the voice of Blaster. Blaster was my first Transformer growing up. Buster Jones had never done a convention up to that point. This was his first convention ever. He did, he did that BotCon. He was amazing. He, was the sw he wore a different velvet suit every day of a different color. He was so cool. He was hard to get to, though, because his health was already starting to diminish, so he didn't do his signings for very long. And then after that BotCon, he passed away. And it was just like, wow, if I would have missed that BotCon, that would have been it. And his autograph is very difficult to get today. And again, Blaster, you know, special place in my heart, that figure. So crazy stuff. Uh, there you go. Yeah, fair lady. Z. I do. There you go. I knew she had one because I remember we took a photo together. We were both like, ah, you know, anyways. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, Dick Gauthier is another one. Dick Gauthier. I was Dick Gauthier's handler at TFCon and that dude was super funny, super lively, but he was already wheelchair bound. Like he was already, like you saw that, like, he was having problems moving around. And that dude was awesome. And that's not just because he was a Rodimus voice actor. He was just a really funny guy. If you could watch his inner, his uh, panel with him and Venus, they did... <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, but it's hilarious. Like, he's just sharp as... what Him and Jack Angel, because they're two, like, crotchety old guys, they were just hilarious when they did that panel. Because it's like, it's Jack Angel, the... the pr Jack Angel's pretty much Cyclonus, uh, Dirge... Ultra Magnus in the the non movie variation of season three, and Dick Goche is like obscure characters, but R Rodimus Prime being one the most important. And so those two who've you know done everything, and then you have Venus, aka Black Arachnia, pretty Venus, and it's just it's, it's such a crazy panel. You, it's probably on TFCon's, um, it's probably on their uh, their their YouTube channel. They probably uploaded something. So good. If not, someone must have uploaded it. But really good stuff. I love Dick Goche. He was such a cool dude. But again, another example, Dick Goche. You know, let me tell you something. As a guy who loves wrestling, wrestlers drop like flies. And it's like every time I'm like, oh man, that guy's going to be at Niagara Falls Comic Con. I, I want to get his autograph. And then I end up like not going to the show, right? For whatever reason, I'm too busy or something. And then the dude passes away. And it's like... Because me, it's not just about owning the autograph. I want it personalized. I, you know, I want to encapsulate that moment too. Um, I just, I don't get autographs just for like, you know, reselling or something like that. It's actually because I like those people and stuff like that. Um, another good example was Gal Geiger, the voice of Guy from Gal Geiger. He was at a anime convention in Toronto. And when do you ever see Japanese voice actors? So that was a big deal. Thank you. Yeah, I got a haircut. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Trying to be suave today as best as I can with a receding hairline. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yes, even yeah, even you, fair ladies, you got to meet Dick too before he passed away. Like that's why, like, you know, some of those some of those voice actors, you only get one chance, you know. So I mean, the TFCon in LA. That happened, what was it, two years ago? I'm already forgetting. But that TFCon in LA that had all of those voice actors, like all those G1 voice actors, some of those voice actors, it was like their first and maybe last convention, you know, for some of those. So it's something that the way I see it, like, you know, try not to miss out on those shows. Because if you're into, like, meeting the guests, sometimes it's like a one and done. Like, you know, look, Scott McNeil. You'll see him everywhere. You'll see Scott McNeil at an anime convention. You'll see Scott McNeil at a Transformer convention. You'll see Scott McNeil maybe outside your house. You never know at 3 a.m. You know, Scott McNeil's everywhere. Gary Chalk, he does multiple shows. David Kay, he does multiple shows. A lot of those, like, guys that, like, you know, that are from the 90s kind of shows, they're a little more in tune with doing cons. But the 80s voice actors, they're older 
and they don't really understand how valuable they are. I was the handler of Chip Chase, you know, Michael Horton, the voice of Chip Chase. That's all he was. He was Chip Chase. And he was like, oh, you know, I was just a human character. I wasn't even in many episodes. You know, I'm with all these other guys that, you know, that are robots. Like, I'll do, he's like, if I make like a hundred bucks, I'll be happy. He did amazing. He did insanely well. It was his first time doing a convention. And after he did insanely well, he was like, I think I need to do more of these. People love, he was, people were bringing him like diskettes to sign so he could tear them up. Like, it was awesome. It was awesome. He was very happy. He was a great guy too. He was really cool. And I got to, I got to meet his family. Imagine the voice actor of Chip Chase, his daughter is dating a guy that's absolutely obsessed with Transformers. So imagine that. Imagine like you're dating someone and their dad was one of the original G1 voice actors. That's kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, anyways, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going on a rant. Uh, Stinkfist69 says here, did you learn anything new about Bret Hart in the one-hour series A&E documentary? Actually... Everything they talked about I knew, but there was one thing that I took away from it that I loved. He showed all of his drawings, because he, he loves doing cartoon work, like drawing like cartoon characters. He showed a bunch of his drawings that I've never seen before, and I messaged him, and I'm like, dude, you got to make a, a book, like a little like art book of something of all your cartoon drawings. Because that, like that, and like a lot of wrestling historians and guys like me that like pay attention to everything, there wasn't much new stuff there. But his home videos from when he was young, his homemade movie that he made called The Iguana, that was new, and his cartoon drawings. So all of that non-wrestling stuff, kind of, was new to me. But everything else, I mean, I'll be honest with you, it was, it was two hours long, the thing. It wasn't an hour. Um, they skipped over a lot of important stuff. His whole WCW career was, like, summed up in, like, two sentences. And while, like, you know, his home movie was, like, 15 minutes. So... It was, it was really good, but I feel that it still didn't capture everything. It could have been longer. Could have been a two-parter, in my opinion. But I still liked it. It was still very good. I didn't like the Randy Savage one, because I watched it, and then I watched the Randy Savage one afterwards. That one wasn't good. I don't suggest watching that one. But enough wrestling talk. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be talking about my boy too much. So, uh, we got a super chat from Lucas Borges Bor Borgesi. I'm, I'm sorry if I butchered the name with a gold super chat. Thank you, Lucas, for the gold super chat. Hey, Proto, my best friend Cam passed recently after a five-year battle with cancer. He wanted me to take figures from his collection after he passed. Do you have a, deep, a deeply personal item in your collection? First off, I want to say my condolences, my friend. It's really tough when that happens. I had someone uh, in the geek fandom also that uh, passed and she was hit by a large vehicle. Me and Jaws D were very close with her. And that was the first time we ever had to deal with someone that was like our age, like passing away. And that was, that was tough for us. We were like shocked because she was such a sweetie. She was such a good human being. Huge into Sentai too. So she was really cool. Um, yeah, that's tough, man. That's really tough. I hope you're doing well too. You know, stay positive. Um, do I have something that's deeply personal in my collection? All of my first Transformers. I have a rule personally, like when it comes to toy lines, uh, this is what my Ninja Turtle collection too. Anything that's childhood toys, even if I get better versions of them, because obviously my childhood toys, they get beat up, they get scratched, you know, we play with them. Um, any of my childhood toys, if I get better versions of them, I never get rid of the childhood ones. And I've, I've shown this on the podcast. I keep it under the desk. The legendary Euro Rotor box. This is a box of brake shoes from, I want to say 1978. They belong to my grandfather. He gave me this box to store my first Transformer toys. Ignore everything behind you. Ignore all of this. This, I, this is literally Proto Man's collection, literally summed up in a nutshell from 1986 up until 1995, up until Beast Wars. Literally, this was my entire Transformer collection. Obviously, you know, we could count some GoBots were mixed into that, which I have, and some McDonald's toys. So, a broken Optimus Prime leg, 
no joke, from Value Village, because I'm crazy when I was a child, I was like, oh my God, that's Optimus Prime's leg. You know, uh, my first blaster, which is beat to hell. He has his antennas are broken. Still have his gun, still have his gun. Uh, a bunch of beat up, missing the missiles, micro masters and yellowed. Look how yellowed he is, you know. Uh, and some, you know, just a bunch of micro masters. And stuff. I will never get rid of these guys. This blaster, all beat up and sticker damage is more valuable than my, well, you could barely see him, but my complete blaster, my minty blasters. All these Micro Masters. This Optimus Prime leg, I will never get rid of. This busted, broken Optimus Prime leg, I will never get rid of. Because it is from my childhood. You know, it's from, from like, those early days. I used to pretend that Blaster was Autobot City. Like, i just stand him up and stuff because he was huge compared to the Micro Masters. And i just pretend because that's all I had of Transformers. And those are, like, deeply personal. And it's the same thing. I have a Ninja Turtle collection with all my first... Ninja Turtle toys, and I'll never get rid of those. I'll never get rid of them. I have the same turtles in way better condition, but I'll never get rid of them. Actually, I have one example right here. Ugh. My first Slash figure. I love Slash. Slash is one of my favorite Ninja Turtle characters. This was the one I had as a kid. His belt, bye bye God knows where it is. It's long gone. His weapons, lost most of them, but the figure survived. Do I have a better Slash now in my display? Oh, I have a complete one, the belt variant, purple belt, black belt, all the weapons, you know? But that's my first one. And I keep that on my desk because it's a personal thing of mine. I love it, I love it. So I have a lot of like that and gifts that I get from people. Like I get a lot of, like I have a little section of my collection which is all custom Transformers that were made for me, gifts. Ultra Primal, who's in the chat, he made me this cool red Formula One Transformer with, with a Human Alliance figure that was modeled after my uniform. I wish I could show that, it's a really cool image. I think it's probably on Twitter. Um, you know, I get all kinds of gifts and stuff. Otis, Transformers made this cool Rodimus custom for me. So those are also deeply personal to me. What, anything that's gifts, you know, that to me, I'd feel bad if I ever got rid of it because someone cared to give it and thought of me and I respect that. You know, I respect that kind of stuff a lot. So th those are just some of them. I hope you're doing well, you know, and, and my, again, my condolences for your friend passing away. That's, that's very difficult. You know, that's, that's always, I'm a big animal lover and uh, I've had a lot of animals growing up. Uh, at one point, I don't know if I've ever talked about it. At one point I had three dogs, five cats, two budgies and two turtles. I lived in a zoo, no joke. And you get used to, you know, falling in love with animals and because dogs and cats, you know, dogs live 15 years if you're lucky, cats 20 if you're lucky, you know, and you, you get your heart broken a lot. So it kind of made me stronger when it came to that. But, you know, it's tough. It is tough. It is really tough. It's tough. Anyways, thanks for the super chat question, man. Now on a lighter note, let's bring up, let's bring up the smiles. Soup99 with the, with the super chat question wants to know, Yo Proto just celebrated my 20th birthday this past week and my girlfriend got me a sealed big convoy and wanted to know what is the cutoff for opening sealed TFs. First of all, happy 20th, uh, 20th, 20th anniversary. Actually, technically an anniversary. En français, c'est anniversaire. In French, it's anniversary. Um, uh... Awesome, man. 20 is the best years of your life. I'm going to say that right now because tw the, the, my 20s were like the best years of my life. So you got a whole crazy road ahead of you, my friend. Um, Big Convoy is an awesome toy. Is it the Korean version, a Korean boxed one or the original Japanese boxed one? Um, cut off for opening Transformers. Um, how I work with that is if it's carded stuff that's vintage... Like, and when I mean vintage, anything that's 25 or older, so Beast Wars early stuff. Like, I have a few. It's kind of hard to see. Oh, it's very hard to see. There's some carded Beast Wars on the wall there. There's Cheetor. There's a Car Robots uh, mock alert. Uh, and then it just goes up, and you guys can't see it, but it's all up there, too, and stuff. But, man, I hate this damn camera. I, you know, I miss back in the day having, like, it's a beautiful HD camera. The quality is great for you guys now, but I miss having a wireless camera that I could kind of just move around with you guys. I miss doing that. Um, but I feel the cutoff is like 20 years. Like if you gave me an Armada carded toy that I didn't have, I'm opening that thing up. And that's, that's almost 20 years now. Uh, it's, you know what it is? Here's another thing too. 
it happened to me. Uh, I was buying the UK Rescue Force figures, and I ended up buying them really cheap carded. And then I had them carded, and I was like, I want to open these so I could have them loose in the display over there. There's my Rescue Force guys. There's Lyo Kaiser. You could see him a little bit along with the other. Uh, Lyo Kaiser, Rescue One, whatever you want to call him. Um, and I had them carded, and I was like, I don't want to open these. I feel like I'm ruining the market if I open these because these are pretty tough to get. I kept them carded. I found loose ones down the line for much cheaper, and then I sold the carded ones. So it's something where also look at the second, like Big Convoy, there's tons of them. They did reissues. I don't think a, a sealed Big Convoy um, will demand too much more than everything else we got at this point. So open it up, man. And Big Convoy is awesome. I mean, there's Big Black Convoy over there, or, or Nemesis Scourge, as I call it, good old Bloody Tusks. And then, of course, my, my Japanese Big Convoy is all with the Beast Wars stuff over there. Great mold. Great mold. Easily one of the best Beast Wars molds ever made, in my opinion. Easily. So, definitely. But the cutoff, eh, 20 years. When, when stuff starts to really be worth money, I find. Carded. That's when it kind of changes. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. But thanks for the super chat question, my friend. Thank you so much, Soup99. And again, happy birthday. Are you a Gemini also? Are you a Gemini? What's the cutoff? What's the date today? Oh, you're yeah, you're a Gemini also. I'm I'm May 27th. I'm a Gemini. And I was I was born. Oh, that's a whole other story. I'll get into that another time. Um Eastman777 wants to know with the super chat question. Thank you, Eastman, with your awesome somewhat Ninja Turtles or like related name. The creator of Ninja Turtles, Eastman. Great haircut. Two questions. Will eHobby be doing a big line of reissues? And what is the last new character to be created? Who would you create? Uh, to answer the first question, eHobby was part of a company called Part One Entertainment in Japan. Part One Entertainment has unfortunately phased out most of their eHobby stuff. It still exists, eHobby. The website still exists but they don't really do as much as they used to anymore. They used to have really good partnerships with magazines and stuff, which kind of funded a lot of their exclusives. But as time passed, unfortunately, eHobby's kind of a shell of what it used to be in since the 2000s. Uh, part one does still exist. My buddy Hydra used to work with them back in the day. Um, I don't think we'll be seeing eHobby so much. We will see more reissues. We'll probably see more reissues from Takara with their Encore line in repaints, but it probably won't be eHobby. Now we have like, you know, Takara Tommy Mall exclusive Generation Selects kind of stuff like on the Japanese side. So that's kind of the way that I see it more than anything else. Uh, your second question is, what was the last new character to be created? Well, let's just dial it back. If we look at Cyberverse, I mean, if, if we don't count comics, because comics are constantly creating background characters all the time. I mean, if you look at Cyberverse, you know, already we have like, you know, characters that are like similar to Silverbolt in that of, uh, what was his name there? Thunder, Thunder Howl. You know, he was a new character, but he really is like a Silverbolt character. And then you have characters like Clobber that are pretty much just Lugnut, but female. Um... Rack and Rune finally getting a version. Uh, who else was new? The new version of Shadow Striker, but we've had that trademark before. Uh, I'm trying to think of someone that's like really new. New, I guess, uh, what's his name there? The, the cowboy dude. Um, oh my God, I just did a toy review on him too. <laughs> it shows how important he was to me. Uh, he's kind of a cool character though. Uh, oh my God, what is his name? Why am I drawing a blank? Someone in the, someone in the chat's going to... Uh, Someone's going to chat's going to jump in. Anyways, you know, he's a new character, whatever his name is. Why am I forgetting? Putting me on the spot here. Um, you know, so those are new guys. So those are probably some of the newest ones. And then when you look at the Bumblebee movie, you know, Wild Wheel. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I should know that. I did a toy review on him. <sighs> Too much in this head. Uh, or, the, or the perfect Decepticon, if you want to count him. But he's technically Tarn, if you want to count that. You know, Megatron X, if you want to count him, if he's a different version of Megatron. But then there was a Megatron X in Beast Wars, the video game, which was a gold repaint of Transmetal Megatron. So, you know, it's, I mean, the fossilizers, if you want to count toy characters. So it's, it's hard to say. And again, when you look at the movie stuff, look, Shatter was a new character. So 
who is the newest character? Whatever's next week. <laughs> There's going to be probably some new stuff. You know? There's always new stuff happening, so it's hard to say. Uh, what would I create? I don't know. It really has to do with, with what is the story. You know, like, because, like, my fan character is not a character that I feel could carry an ongoing story. He'd be like the one episode racing episode character. You know what I mean? And then he would be like more of a background character or something like that. Like, you know, uh, there's certain characters that you could see progress a story. It really has to do with what is that series. You know, if you're Galaxy Force, a.k.a. Cybertron, and you have the planet of Speedia or Speed Planet, then you have like a good seven episodes of like my character Proto being part of it or something, the red Formula One car. But it really has to do with setting and, and situation. How many episodes I got? Um, I don't know. That's a tough one to answer because it, it, there's a lot of factors that lead into that. You know, there's a lot of factors that, in, that lead into that. Uh, la, 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 la. Let's take one random, rando non-super chat just for now. Uh, we have here, okay, Proto, big powered or big convoy? Which one should I buy? Which big powered? Are we talking big powered, the original G1 version? Because then you're talking a huge money discrepancy there. You're talking big powered is pro like non not not mint in box just loose complete is probably like a thousand five hundred where a big convoy <laughs> a big convoy uh loose complete is maybe 60 bucks 70 bucks i'm going to assume maybe you mean the legends version and even then that's still a big price discrepancy maybe 300 dollars. so i mean i'd go with big powered because it's the better figure but it won't be better for your wallet <laughs> I mean, Big Convoy is still pretty awesome, too. The Legends one, okay. Well, then again, it's still a $300 discrepancy. I would, I mean, Big Big Powered has Die Atlas, Sonic Bomber, and Road Fire. It's cool retooling. They're really awesome. They're much more limited than Big Convoy. Big Convoy has had Japanese release. It had the Korean release, which is exactly the same as the Japanese release, just different box. Then you had the two reissues that were done by Takara. Then you have all the different repaints that exist, whether it be Nemesis, Big Black Convoy, Ultra Magnus, or Ultra Mammoth, as he was called. Um, so I'd go with the Big Powered, personally, if I had to choose between the two. Uh, where are we at here? Where are we at here? Proto, once a jerk said that to be a real Transformer fan... You should have a G1 Devastator. I asked that, does that really define being a Transformer fan? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Owning one piece of merchandise of anything does not... There's not a single Transformer figure, period, that defines that you are a Transformer fan. Not owning G1 1984 Optimus Prime doesn't say you're a... Tra not owning it doesn't, doesn't say you're not a Transformer fan. Not owning, uh, God, what's the most common? Like, owning Beast Wars Cheetor, 1995. You know? There's not a single one. Transformers is a brand that has been around for 35-plus years, has so many different starting points for different people, and has so many different groups of audiences that grew up with those different starting points. To right away shoehorn one specific figure to say that, that if you don't own that, you're not a fan, that's silly. You know, and especially Devastator, you know, like Devastator might be a little, you know, controversial, but Devastator is not even of the original G1 combiners. Like, I mean, the toys, not the show. I mean, the toy itself, not even the best combiner, <laughs> in my opinion. He, if you find a loose, complete G1 Devastator, he's going to have some problems standing and he's not even that great. You know, he's fun. Don't get me wrong, but uh I mean, I kind of like the Stunticons or, or De Defensor and the Protectobots way more. So I think that's silly for someone to say that. But uh, he probably didn't know what he's talking about. A lot of times people give opinions, but those opinions aren't really grounded with deep thinking. They just kind of spout silly things. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, w I wouldn't say that, brother. And you could have, look, you could have like five Transformer toys and they could all be Beast Wars toys. And that makes you a Transformer fan, in my opinion, you know. And they could all be non-show characters. I own Retrax, Man Up Terror, uh, 
Power Pinch, Tigatron, and... I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to, And Wolf Fang. You know? Still a Transformer fan in my mind. Tom Laney wants to know, you mentioned Korean packaging. Are those considered knockoffs? No, they are not. Um, okay, so the story with that is back in the mid-2000s, a company called Sonokong, which is the Korean distributor for Takara Tomy, or Takara back in the day, was the one responsible for distributing all of Hasbro and Takara's products into the Korean market. And they had a very close relationship for many years. Not just Transformer product. Sonokon Beyblades, which is again Takara. Sonokon um, uh, Michi-chan, which is like a doll line. So tons and tons and tons and tons of product. All it is, is they took, they literally took Big Convoy out of the Japanese factory. Or the Chinese factory made for Japanese products. And put it in Korean flavored packaging. That's it. But it's the exact same toy. Same date mark stamping, same everything. There is no difference whatsoever. You know what's the difference? The trading cards that come with them for the Beast Wars Neo toys, they're Korean. I think I have a few of them, actually. I could show you. But um, I'm not going to... I'll pull it out another time. <laughs> Don't clip that line. Uh, but the point is, is that, uh, you know, that stuff, honestly, like, it's exactly the same. The only, you know what? The only thing that sucks about the Korean ones is if you go to a BotCon or TFCon and you want to keep the box, here's the box for Big Convoy in Japan. Here's the box for Big Convoy in Korea. The Korean boxes are always massively huge. They're, but they are official and they are not knockoffs. They are not. Yeah, the, the Brave... Ma so here, Rodimus Primal, the Brave Maximus Sonokong. The only difference between the two is the Korean on the bottom of the box and... It was a factory mistake because those came out way after Car Robots did it. The sticker, I think, on his chest, and that's how you tell the difference between one that was bought there and the other one, if you get a loose one, uh, one of the stickers is upside down. But at the same time, you take a hair dryer to that, peel it off, put it back the right way, you're good to go. You know. But it's the exact same toy. Nothing is different. The instruction manual, you, un you undo the instruction manual, it still has the play mat. You know, It's a Korean instruction manual. So it's, it's the same thing otherwise. There is no difference at all. Uh, someone said Windblade? Michael, what do you mean by Windblade, my friend? What do you mean by Windblade? Here is, uh, she got the Takar version, and I hope they make a Masterpiece version someday. I hope so, too. Big Convoy... Is a, the sad thing is I don't think it'll happen anytime soon because I feel like I feel like Big Convoy is still like Lyo Convoy didn't sell very well, mind you. Lyo Convoy is kind of boring compared to Big Convoy. So Masterpiece Lyo Convoy did meh. They did the repaints and stuff. So maybe we might see a Big Convoy, but I don't think anytime soon. I'd like to be wrong. Because I love Big Convoy. I love his Matrix gimmick. I mean, I have, like, even my Nemesis one doing the Matrix thing like that. Um, I think every single one of them. I did that with my Ultra Mammoth, and I think I did that with... Yeah, I did that with the other one, too. <laughs> with the uh, Beast Wars Neo one. Uh, great figure. Great figure. Great... I, like, I would want a, a Masterpiece Big Convoy, only if it could come with some, like, cool extras and stuff, too. Of the gung-ho crew. Uh, I saw a really good question. Where was that one? Talking about your Matrix necklace, last week's stream inspired me to finally go on eBay and pick up a Battle in Space 2-pack for $30 sealed. My first time messing with the Deluxe Rodimus mold. Awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, now you can get a chain for that necklace, too. Uh, and it also comes with a really cool comic book. Like, that's a cool... You know what's crazy with that pack? That pack at one point was like on clearance too. Like they made too many of them and then they were like going on clearance for like $10. You got two amazing deluxe figures. That Cyclonus is a really good Cyclonus figure. It's a nice color scheme too. The Rodimus is, you know, it's a pretty good one. It's not the best version of that Rodimus in terms of color scheme. I still think that the Hen K version is slightly better uh, because I like the gold chrome spoiler. But I mean, still pretty. the mold is still awesome. 
And then you have that comic book that comes with it, which is really cool too. And then Cyclonus comes with a Target Master partner, so you even get a little Transformer figure. And then you get the Matrix necklace. All of that at one point was in clearance for like 10 to $15. What a deal. What a deal. Man, I miss those days sometimes. I really do. I really do. Really good set. Really good, really little good set there. Victor Wong wants to know, is Ultra Mammoth completely hard to find these days? Yeah, well, see, the problem with Ultra Mammoth was he was one of those subscription service figures, and the subscription service was ridiculously expensive to begin with. In order to get Ultra Mammoth, you had to buy all five figures of that year of the subscription service, which, to my knowledge, came to about like 350 bucks. I got to work with Fun Pub, so I didn't have to pay for a lot of those. Uh, and what I think the second to last year was 4.0. 4.0, all the bios were written by me that year. That was like the needle nose, needle nose, spinister needle nose, uh, wind shear, garbouge, and bludgeon. Those were all me <laughs> that year. So if, if you hate those bios, hate this guy. If you think those bios were badly written. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at with the super chat? How much time we have? Oh, we still got 30 minutes. Okay, we're still good. We're still good. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Brought to you by Naya. And Symbiote Studios. Be sure to get the our awesome plush. <laughs> Just going to shout them out. Got to shout them out. They're good guys. Hasbro's always good to me, and Symbiote's always good to me. Uh, where we got here? Uh, Proto, what, what type of bots from different dimensions will come to make a team with Megatron X in the TFC season four. I have no idea. It's it's probably gonna be like bizarro versions of them. I mean, like we saw a little bit of Megatron X in the last season of, of Cyberverse. So we'll probably see more of that. Um, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Claude says here, hey Proto, did you see the new He-Man Revelations trailer? Salut from Montreal. Someone from Montreal. What's up, brother? Welcome to the craziness. Um, yes, I did see the trailer. I'll be honest with you. I like what I see, but maybe it's just me. Is the animation kind of not polished or is it just me? I don't know because I, I, it's the same thing. Like, I don't know anyone watched the uh, Castlevania anime Netflix series. Season one was like really nice looking. And then, like, I felt like season two and season three, the animation started to drop off. The He-Man series kind of looks like season three Castlevania. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's just my eye. But, I mean, it looks great. Don't get me wrong. Like, the story, the premise, everything that's going on, that's cool. But the animation, something looks like not finished. Like, they forgot to put a filter or something. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. You know, look, but I will say this, animation will not stop me from watching it. This is a guy that loves watching, you know, Gundam 1978, UC Century. Animation isn't a thing for me. You know, like, I wa some of my favorite cartoons have terrible animation. But I'm just saying, like, looking at that trailer, I was just like, you know, for like 2021 Netflix, like, it could be better, right? Or, you know, it should be, right? I don't know. Uh, Tom Lady, with Beast Wars making a comeback, think maybe somehow Beast Wars 2, or Beast Wars 2nd, and Beast Wars Neo get released in anything for new characters? I think so. I do. Look, we got Skywarp from Beast Wars 2nd. Granted, that was a character that also existed as Silverbolt in the Western world, but uh, it's there, you know, so it shows that that potential is there. It, it's on the plate. They will consider doing something like that. So um, definitely, for sure. 200%. Uh, Victor says, Oh man, I wish I had joined the TFC back in the day with the big wallet. I got the, these figures uh, with proto bios. Damn it, chasing old stuff. Oh, you did get that one. Okay, cool. I'll be honest with you, I, I worked on that, that, that whole segment. That's not the best year. I think the best year was the last year. The one that came with the pretender shells. Because that one, what was cool about that was it gave you pretender shells that were extremely difficult to get. Because the Oil Master one was based off of an old uh, bo uh, Bacon, old uh, G1 concept of Pretender Shells. And the Megatron Pretender Shell is based off of the... Uh, you can barely see it because of big uh, Fortress Maximus then. But the uh, Grand Maximus Pretender Shell. The Grand Pretender Shell. 
done as an evil Megatron version, so that was pretty cool. Uh, Proto, have you done any finance videos on Reveal the Shield Lugnut? Because that figure has been going for astronomical prices on eBay recently. Uh, no, I have not. Usually, uh, the finance videos, what when I usually do them, it's because there's a big price movement in recent time. Reveal the Shield Lugnut has been high for a long time because he actually had very bad distribution back then. Uh, that whole wave, Lugnut, uh, the Lockdown, which was a deluxe. What else was in that wave? There was a lot of weird stuff in that wave. And they all had really bad distribution. So even back then, people were having difficult time getting them and, and paying big money for them. So like if, if he's like, like, what does he go for today? Like what's because if he's still going for like 60 to 80 dollars, that's not too crazy because that's kind of what people were asking even when he was new coming out because he was only showing up in like, oh, some targets might get him. And like, you know, some some Toys R Us's back in the day might have got him. He didn't show up at Walmart at all. You know, so it was very tough that that wave. Like the Jazz wave, which was like the first wave of Reveal the Shield, that did okay, but all the others, man. Like I think I think the easiest way to get that that uh, that lo the uh, lockdown was like even one of the TFCC uh, exclusives. It was cheaper <laughs> and easier. 115. Okay, so he went up a little bit. Went up a little bit. That's crazy. You know what though? Again, why is that? Probably the best lug nut toy at the moment. The second we get a better one, because you know that trademark's coming. It'll go down. Well, if you got yours for, for 40 chicken soup, you got it for MSRP, as you should, or less even. <laughs> I'm not even a fan of MSRP. I would go less. Uh, hey, Proto, do you think we'll ever get Transformer cartoons that focus on Decepticons only or explore their ideology? Well, if you had a series that had more than six episodes, yes. Because if you have a series that has more than six episodes, you have more time to go hey episode like if you have like a 32 episode series or a 52 episode series you could take one episode dedicated just to the cons beast wars did it with the predacons where they'd have whole episodes just focusing on people so it's something that uh you know i could see it happening but if you if we have a six episode cyber uh cyberverse uh kingdom series or anything we get in the future no they're just gonna binge it quickly that style and no character development character development is angst and and people talking like this because we have to get the all spark and the voice director is just phoning it in <laughs> that's my uh war for cybertron impression of every character Lizard Sphere X with the super chat question. Thank you, Lizard Sphere X. You are a credit to the Dragon Ball world. I'd like to see Optimus go up against alternate antithesis versions of himself, like wh like what went on with Batman and his Rogue Gallery in nineteen eighties. It's funny actually that you mentioned that they kind of played with that with Regeneration One, where uh, Rodimus fought multiple different versions of Optimus Prime. His Power Master, his Action Master, his G1 version. So, I mean, the idea has been done. Uh, the only problem is it was Hot Rod, a.k.a. Rodimus Prime, f fighting him. Fighting those versions. And they were all from, they were all like zombie versions from different continuities and different parts of the timeline. Um, so it's been done. But uh, I'm pretty sure they'll do... Look, the, the idea of an evil version of a character and them fighting is a tale as old as time. Um, God, like I think, God, what's one of the first versions of that? I know like Speed Racer did it where he fought. And that's like this ninth, like I'm, I'm talking cartoons specifically. And that's like 1966, 1965, you know, in Japan, Mahago, you know, so that's the earliest I can think. Of. I'm pretty sure Astro Boy fought an evil version of himself at some point, you know, so it's like, I mean, that's as early as I could think of. But, I mean, that idea has been around forever. So I, at some point, a Nemesis Prime is going to fight an Optimus Prime again. It will happen again. Multiple versions? I don't know about that. Maybe one day. You have a Nemesis, a Scourge, and a Black Convoy against Optimus Prime. 
what's another what's another name for them? Menasaur. They did a Menasaur, which was a black repaint of a Rodimus. But thank you for the super chat question. Lizard Sphere X. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, that's why the War for Cybertron games were cool. You got to view both sides of the faction. The War for Cybertron games were a blessing. When when we talked about it with uh, with Aaron Archer on the stream, that was a passion project. That wasn't just people doing a job. That was a passion project. Uh, let's see, where are we at here? Josh D with the super chat. Couldn't Hasbro request YouTube to demonetize the, re uh, the reviewer channels to anyone reviewing unreleased or stolen figures? They could, but they'd have to prove it. Because the thing is, they could go like, hey, they stole our stuff, and then they would have to prove how it was stolen. I mean, obviously, we kind of have the, re we have conversations proving that this is stolen material, because we have uh, Instagram, not is it Instagram? Instagram private messages between Tauntaun, uh, Prime versus Prime, and uh, the other individual that also was stealing stuff, and with other people that were buying. So we know that they are stealing. We have the conversations, but uh, we don't have concrete evidence for them to do it. And obviously Hasbro doesn't have those conversations. It's, it's, and then you could argue, oh, those conversations were photoshopped. That's not me, you know. But look, you know how you you know how you stop that? Don't watch it. You know what's great? Look, TFW 2005. You know what they do when they upload those videos? Those guys, TFW 2005, takes screenshots of it and puts it on their website as at, for themselves. That way, you don't have to watch their video. Go to TFW 2005, look at the screenshots, and give Tony Bacala some money, who's been running TFW for years. Tony deserves money. He created an entire community. You don't need to give it to these thieves. Just don't watch them. Don't even watch for a second. Because if you watch for a second, you gave them ad revenue. Don't even watch them. Ignore them. Don't even go into it to, to downvote. Don't bother with that. Ignore them. Ignore them. That's it. That's it. That's all I say. They don't exist. And they're not even good reviewers. That's, the wor That's probably the most frustrating part. They don't even know what they're talking about. So ignore them. Ignore him. But on a positive note, what else do we got here? Your thoughts on... Uh, yeah, yeah, blah, blah. I'm uh, finding the wrong question here. Where is it? Uh, saw another question that was good. Armada had some one, De oh, Decept one, one Decepticon only episodes. Yeah. Armada, an anime, 52 episodes. You're going to get it. Energon did it too. Energon had tons of episodes that just focused on the Terracons and Scorponok and, and Alpha Q and stuff like that. When you have 52 episodes, you have the, the wiggle room where you could, you know, plock in something decent. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Hey, Proto, do you think Hasbro can or should do a Studio Series subline for concept characters that never made the movies um, like uh, the Offspray or Breakaway. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. Like, Hasbro already does that with Star Wars. So sooner or later, I could see that happening. But I think that the difference is, the reason why they've done it with Star Wars is because they've exhausted everything else where they haven't, done, they haven't exhausted it. Look, we live in a world today where we still don't have a Botanica figure. Hasbro still has plenty more to do before they've exhausted everything that could be done, before they dive into, like, you know, obscure, you know, early design stuff that never happened. But, you know, when you think about it, like, animated Cheetor is kind of like, hey, remember Transtech Cheetor? Kind of channeling that. And uh, Armada Megatron was using the, uh, I think his name was the Immortal, or Mortalizer, whatever. It was, it was a concept design from Transtech. And then they used that designs and they used it for the Megatron. So Andy with the super chat saying Proto Man dropping the hammer. I'm not dropping the hammer, I, honestly, Andy. I'm just like, I'm just like, the way that I see it is, is what, what sucks is people are like, oh, it's so stupid that they do that. But then they watch their videos. You're helping them, you know? You know, like the, you just go like, and the worst part is what's also bad is if you watch my videos and then you watch their videos, what happens is, is YouTube then goes, oh, 
people like watching these two content creators. So in the future, when people watch Proto Man's content, we'll make sure on the sidebar to put their content to suggest it. So what's going to suck is, is if you watch my content, their stuff's going to be suggested on top of that, which I don't want to encourage that at all. You know? Immorticon, there you go. That's his name. He was designed by, uh, what's his name? He was a super talented dude. He does tattoos in, in the GTA in Toronto. Really cool guy. Really cool guy. Marcelo? Is it Marcelo? Something like that. Really cool dude. He always does every TFCon. Uh, do you have any tips for anyone trying to promote their Transformers Instagram fan page? The only advice I could really give is hashtags. That's a, how, how people find you on Instagram is hashtags. So be sure to put, like, if you do, like, a, a photo of this, right? So put hashtag Transformers, hashtag Heatwave, hashtag RescueBots, hashtag Dragons, uh, hashtag Autobots, you know? Hashtag Hasbro Toys. It's all in the hashtags. That's how people find you. That's the only way people find you. Because uh, Instagram doesn't have a proper search algorithm. You don't have a way to be retweeted by a friend. So that's the only way people could ever find you. Josh D with another super chat question wants to know, do you have any tips for any Transformer fans who want to promote... Oh, he already asked it. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. But yeah, that's, uh, that's literally how I would do that. Like, you just, whatever you take photos of, and it could be not just Transformers, but anything. It's all in the hashtags. When you do Twitter, Twitter, you're reliant on people doing searches with the search engine. For the few people that actually do use hashtags, Twitter's not that important with hashtags. Or people retweeting you or liking you. That's how you get your stuff out on Twitter. But with Instagram, it's all about your hashtags. You need to use those to your, to your maximum. So whatever you're doing, if you just post something and you don't put any hashtags, you're pretty much saying only my followers are going to see this. That's it. And if you're a celebrity, they could get away with that because they have millions of subscribers and people are going to find them because they're a celebrity. They're going to find them for that. Trust me, I have a whole social science when it comes to using social media. You know, there's a whole science to that, especially even YouTube. I, I could do like a whole panel just on how to be successful in YouTube. It's dirty, it's easy, it's disgusting, but it works. Uh, let's see, what's next? What's next with the questions? Oh man, we only have 10 minutes left. Ah! Yeah, the YouTube algorithm is weird. No, but you know what? I, it makes sense though, Anastasia. It, it, the, the thing is, is that like, it, it just, it, it makes sense though, because there has been times where they've suggested stuff to me that I ended up liking, you know? I love looking at historical wrestling interviews, but I'll go to one specific guy. But then they'll go, hey, you like this? Check out this dude. And then I go, yes, I think I will. Oh, that was good too. Because they make those connections. So it does work out in the end for the good, but it also sometimes works out in the end in the yucky. You know? Hey, Proto, have you ever seen Neon Genesis and Evangelion? Yes, I have. I've built, built model kits. I've watched it all. And I feel that is it, to sum it up, absolutely amazing animation, absolutely amazing music, dog shit ending, <laughs> terrible ending, uh, the main character is a wimp, and I honestly feel, and someone said this to me years ago, and it blew my mind, take Ava, gender swap everybody, and now the series makes sense. Asuka is like this badass, like, you know, fiery, like, you know, character that, like, your typical, like, mech mech like anime mech leader character that's like a red like a koji kabuto kind of character like if you gender swapped everyone all of a sudden it makes more sense you know ray would be that like you know downer kind of character that tro troa kind of character from gundam or hero yui you know like i'm telling you you'll see <laughs> but i mean great designs great unique concept unique concept unique mecha designs amazing music the music in ava is amazing the characters are some of the weakest stuff, and the ending is garbage. And I don't want to spoil the ending for people that haven't seen it, but that's always been my opinion on Ava. I think Gundam's a way better series, and I think stuff that came after Ava, there's tons of stuff that came after Ava that is way better. I think that all the love that Ava gets is because of its merchandising, 
and I used to always say it, I would see Ava action figures of like Asuka in a Christmas outfit or Ray in a bunny outfit. And I'd be like, hey, remember that episode? Of course you don't, because there, that never happened. It's just, it's, Ava succeeds and survives because of the ladies. And by the ladies, I mean the, the women in the show. <laughs> that's, just, that's just my hot take on it. Josh D with the gold super chat question. If I shared a post from my Instagram, TF Cybershark with you on Instagram, would you kindly share it? Well, you, that's the problem with Instagram is you can't share stuff. You can't share. You could tag people. Like it's hard to like go, hey, check out my friend's stuff without making just a post about it. You know what I mean? Like it's it's something where you just have to use those hashtags. I'm tell I'm telling you though, if you use the hashtags, you're gonna see an increase right away in, in your your if you use them right too, like just spell stuff. You're gonna see an increase right away in your viewership. It's all the difference because my sister had Instagram. And she was posting all her art. She does like, you know, like sketch art and stuff. You know, like arts, like not like of cartoons and stuff like that, but just like sketch art and everything. And I told her, put, put hashtags, put, you know, charcoal art, you know, outdoor art, painting. Da, 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 da. She put like, you're allowed 30 hashtags. That's the max you're allowed. She put all those hashtags and then all of a sudden, it just completely changed. Completely changed. Misato is greater than Ray, greater than Asuka. Who's the new, the new girl? There's the new one in the in the Ava movies. Those those remake ones. What's her name? The one with the glasses. Forget her name. She's kind of cool too, but we don't know much about her still. I like her. She's she's unique and different. But she was clearly made because they were like, okay, we need guys who have glasses fetishes, and we need to sell tons of action figures for that. I think her name's Mari, 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 something like that. Mari, I think it was Mari. Um, who's messaging now? Ah, oh, there you go. I got an Instagram message already about it. <laughs> um, hey, Proto TF finance question. Do you think 35th anniversary war for Cybertron may be worth more in a year or two? No, nah, there is so many of those that are out there and I don't feel it's the best version of that character. So, like, there's many better versions, and there's many more to come. Ritsuko. Oh, that's true. Also her, too. Forgot about Ritsuko. <laughs> now we're going to get into an Ava a fight about who's your favorite waifu. <laughs> Personally, my favorite, it's kind of a tie between, like, Asuka. Because I like o I feel like Asuka doesn't belong in the show. Like, she belongs in, like, a Gundam show. Or she belongs in, like, a super robot show. She doesn't belong in the Ava universe. She's too, she's too cool. Uh, where are we at here? Hey, Proto, how was your Baku GP for you? Baku GP? Am I missing something here? Crazy results. I think you need to say something else. Like, what, what do you mean, Roborn? Baku GP? They really milked that Megatron mold. Yeah, that's the problem. The thing is, what defines value in Transformers isn't something being old. That's the sad thing. Value is defined by, is it the best version of that character? And what else is available? And that's, the, that's why those Pretender shells now are worth money. Because there is no better versions. I love these guys. But they're not the better versions. No, not by a long shot. You know? Whoa, all the super chats are flowing in. Woo. Let's jump into some. Mikey Four Barrel wants to know, Proto, do tri why do Tripartitus and Magnaboss seem so different from the rest of the Beast Wars products? Were they designed by a separate team? No, actually. It's just because, number one, um, it still was the Kenner crew working with Japan, but it was more so because when was the last time that Transformers, up till those two guys, had a decent combiner team? And that goes like all the way back to like the Micro Masters with six turbo and six changer. I'm obviously not counting like G2 when they would just repaint, retool the uh, the Constructicons and the Aerial Bots and stuff. And when you look at those guys, they're blocks. So here we go into Beast Wars, ball joints, you know, all kinds of things. No more plugging into points and the simple Scramble City combination. It was a different era, a whole new different era and a whole new different kind of engineering. And it was going to be different. It's like if, if alternators 
all of a sudden had combiners, you know, they would have been done completely different than everything we were used to up that point that would have been combiners. When we look at like, let's say now how we have the combiner war stuff, that's John Warden going like, hey, remember those like plug points with Scramble City Transformers, aka the original G1 combiners outside of Devastator? And how like it was so universal and everything and we could swap them. Why don't we go back to that? And the rest is history. Where Tripredicus, it's not like you could put, you know, C-clamp as the, as the top instead of the bottom or something. It's not like you could take Ironhide and not make him the legs. So it, it was a completely different apples and oranging kind of engineering combined with being the first combiner to have ball joint engineering involved. Are they messy? Are they complicated? Are one of them extremely fragile today? Of course. But they were the beginning. And when they're the beginning, there's hiccups along the way. We got a super chat question from Stinkfist69 with the gold super chat. And it might be one of the last super chats of the day. By the way, Mikey, thank you for the super chat question. I hope that helped. Um, hi, Proto. Have you ever seen Ninja Scroll, the anime movie? Of course, 100%. I'm a big anime guy, so that's that's like a given. That was the, my introduction into anime back in the 90s. I think it would be awesome if they made a live action movie today. What are your thoughts? Keep it thick. <laughs> Everyone with the keep it thick. Um, my first introduction to anime, if you count television, was everything that was played in Quebecois French. Uh, if you're French in Quebecois, they played tons of anime on the French channels. Be that's a whole long story with the PQ and not wanting to play Anglophone cartoons dubbed in French. That's a whole other story. But the point is, I saw a lot of anime growing up, so I can't really pinpoint what was the first one. Maybe Speed Racer, maybe Captain Albatar, which is uh, Captain Harlock, but it I can't pinpoint it. My first ever VHS rental of anime, though... Uh, that would have to be Tank Police and then Rama One Half. And Tank Police is awesome. It's from the creator of Ghost in the Shell. And Rama One Half is a freaking classic. I love Rama One Half. Super underrated. People don't give it enough praise. Um, I, and by the way, going to Ninja Scroll, I, I think Ninja Scroll is amazing. Incredible animation. Really good story. Jubei is an awesome character. A lot of the characters in Ninja Scroll would go on to inspire a lot of other anime and video game stuff. Um, one of the characters in Ninja Scroll went on to, to inspire the character Nicotine from the Samurai Showdown series. Like, I'm a big Samurai Showdown guy. So, like, there's a lot. Like, Ninja Scroll is super revolutionary. Is it gory? Is it violent? Is it sexual? Yeah, it's all those things. But it's a great, like, piece of product to see what animation could do at its highest level, especially cell animation for that time. Galdarak. Galdarak, a.k.a. UFO Grandizer. You know? There's a lot of French-Canadian stuff. Michael Butcher, no, no question. Okay, Michael, ask the last question, brother. Ask the last question for the day, and then we're done. One more question. It's Michael. Give it to me, brother. I'm going to wait. Oh, my God. They're all coming in. All right. We'll do Victor's, too, then, also. Uh, since it's kind of anime night, my first anime ever was Iria. Iria is really good, too. Really, really good, also. I like her. The, um, the manga version is really good, also, because you got to want more stuff. Uh, any chance you saw it? Yep. Yeah, you have to understand. I was a big anime guy when anime was... Pretty much you rented VHSs from the video store and stuff. I had this great place called Black Lotus Cafe. No joke. That's what it was called. It was named after a Magic the Gathering store. And this guy just had everything. And I just rented all kinds of stuff. I was a big anime 90s guy. I'm still an anime dude, still to this day. But 90s anime was the shit, yo. It really was. It was really good. All of that stuff. Bubblegum Crisis, that's another one. You know, Bubblegum Crisis is really good. Some of my favorites, again, Rama One Half is one of them. Golden Boy. Oh, Golden Boy. <laughs> Golden Boy is... <laughs> it's, it's a it's, it's a etchy anime, not hentai, an etchy anime, but it is so about life and thought-provoking, and Kintaro is such an amazing character. He's like a spirit animal in a lot of ways. Life is study. Educate yourself. Learn. Grow. That is the Kintaro way of the Golden Boy. With the Mitsuzuki 5. Vampire Hunter D, that's a really good one. That's more 2000s. Um, did Michael ask his question or he didn't ask one? Oh, the F1 Grand Prix. Oh, that's what you were talking about. I didn't catch it, man. I didn't catch it. 
you know what? I've been so busy with because now my hockey team, Montreal's in, in the NHL final uh, semifinals. Now I've been focusing on my hockey. I've been so busy with so much stuff too. You know balancing everything i try to catch the grand prix when i can but the problem is time zones when they do a grand prix on the other side of the globe sometimes there's just no way to catch it you know sometimes there's just no way ah uh, here we go michael's the last question michael's last questions will Seacons come back i got two of them how about wicked city <laughs> wicked city was a spicy anime to say the least um when you mean come back if you mean the original Generations one getting reissues, probably not, unfortunately, unless they do a box set down the line later in a different color scheme. Will we see them again? Of course. All of those trademarks will be seen again. Hey, look, we got combiners being revisited again. That's the rumor that we hear. So at some point, it's going to happen at some point. That being said, we are done for the night, guys. It was amazing. Two hours flew by. Thanks, everyone who came. Man, a lot of people came in today. A lot of Hasbro people, a lot of YouTube people, a lot of old friends from BotCons and TFCons. Just a lot of great people just came in today. Thanks again for coming, guys. Once again, I just want to say, if you want to support the podcast, we have the Patreon. If you could come join, or if you want to be a YouTube member, all the people who are YouTube members got unlimited questions. If you notice, there are green names. Guys like Andy and Stinkfist and all the others that I'm just seeing here, you know, so... You know, if you want to support the podcast. Otherwise, again, just follow my stuff. We got my Twitter account where I post all kinds of cool stuff. My Instagram where I post a whole bunch of cool toys. And theprotoman.com is just where everything is all in one place. You could see the stuff that I've worked on with Hasbro. You could see all the other things and the links to everything, including this. Thanks, everyone, for coming. You guys are the ones that make this the number one. It is number one. Number one Transformer podcast in the world. And I will keep trying to do my best to give you everything. And like I always say, roll out.